Hello and welcome back to another part of Legendary Iron Man uh, Lone Wolf Run. My name is Saiken and we're playing on the highest difficulty. We're in Waterworld <coughs> with a single soldier. It's time for Hopbite to continue this mission. And as you've seen in the first iteration, we already had a pretty intense fight with a lot of enemies. So... I think it's fair to say that this indeed is a very, very difficult setup. And we need to take our time in order to not get overrun again. Biggest problem in the first part was we lost a lot of hit points. Could have gone much worse than that. We still have our armor which uh, counts for much for, um, in, a, in his setup because after the dodge, the armor essentially reduces... Uh, after dodge halves the damage, armor reduces it by one. So with dodge together, armor is just so much more effective. Let's see that we can regain some hit points. Tried our best to do that at the beginning. We were... Yeah, somewhat down to 85, 84 hit points even. And we're now back to 90. But I certainly want more hit points to begin with. So typically over here there are a couple of robots. Not sure if that's uh, the case this time. Let's poke the hornet nest a bit. Uh, yeah, I think it's fair to say that there are a few milli units here. They do have a very real chance of surrounding me, by the way, which would absolutely suck. <laughs> okay, Berserker time. Yeah, that's a good hit. Love it. So just out of curiosity, like we're doing... Ten, uh, we're dealing at minimum 10 points of damage. We can simply stay here and parry. Might as well kill them all. Yeah, that's a pretty easy pack for us. Melee enemies really ain't got nothing on us. Specifically with Bladestorm, we de dealt so much extra damage. There we go. So this is it. Parry and... Let's move the commander a little bit further in as well. Good. Hopefully we can 
uh, get another pack with Advent in it because that's our only chance to regenerate hit points. Normally, picks are positioned like somewhere around here. Either directly, and I think this here might trigger at least one pack. Probably even more than that. Ooh, vipers. Gotta be careful here. Even more vipers. Okay, we gotta be really careful here. Unfortunately, haven't seen a single advent. Hmm, that's really lamentable. I'll start picking off the Vipers. And let's go back. We have a lot of room to kite them. So I'm not afraid to use that room to maneuver. They have tactical analysis anyway, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine enemies. 10, 11, 12, 13. I might miscount it a lot. So the hunter just showed himself, which unfortunately means that the warlock is going to be the last enemy. Mm. Yeah. Not really optimal, to be honest. All right, moving in. I would like to focus on the chosen first. The others are still behind uh, behind the building, so it's far enough away. Moving into full cover. Let's start with the Null Lens this turn. Mainly because I know that other enemies will come in and I would want to use the uh, the area of effect once multiple enemies are in range. Fighting against him is definitely a pain in the rear due to his mobility. Might as well parry. The faster we can get rid of him, the better, because then we can focus on all of the other enemies. Probably going to take a shot onto the commander or not. 
Maybe he's summoning as well. Or maybe he's doing no none of that. Don't want to go for the Viper yet. go and try to deal as much damage. I should have probably amplified. Where did he teleport to? Okay. Well, that's absolutely fine for me. Might as well fully move back. Time to... well, most of them should move around this corner. But I'm still holding back with the uh, with the AoE ability. Until uh, we can see more enemies. So the Hunter... It's just annoying, because if we don't focus it, he'll continue to use tracking shot. And if we focus it, the others are going to kind of overrun us. So we need to find the sweet middle ground. This is a great option f uh, for an AoE. Yep, they are slowly but surely coming in. Fortunately, still can't see the hunter. Hmm. Okay. That is very unfortunate, which means we need to focus on one of the Vipers. And we have a huge range with it. Let's let them come one more time. By the way, mind control on a gatekeeper is also a really nice option for us to strengthen our uh, forces. That that was uh, the the hunter. He literally just stood in the room. The hunter is unfortunately also regenerating, which means we really got to like stick on him every round that we're doing something else gives him more and more time Ooh, perfect Let me do a couple of things here. Number one, amplify. I wanted to hit the hunter. Okay, let's move back. I don't want to be overrun. Let's take over the 
Good old gatekeeper. Lovely. Good. Wow, this here is... That's going to be nice once we use uh, Gateway with the Gatekeeper. Continuing to harass the Hunter. Still at 30 hit points. Fairly healthy. Don't want to risk anything, so... We're moving back. The gatekeeper is now our front line. And as they pile up, they are in a fantastic spot for us to use an AoE attack. Double movements all across the board. Yep, that here is going to be a perfect setup for gateway. Tons of damage. And the Vipers seem to be on our side as well because they are poisoning their own uh, own allies. <laughs> Critical hit for one. Great. Lovely. The hunter fucks up his shot. It's getting better by, by the minute. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah, we're pretty much void rifting. Perfect. Everyone is affected. Getting the Berserk into kill range. And now it's time to use our Gatekeeper Gateway ability. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Hilarious. Love it. So this will kill two of them. Also the gatekeeper will take some damage, which is good. Uh, the shell will close. So it'll take less damage in the enemy's turn. Plus we're already setting it up because we need to kill it later. We can't keep it forever. Yeah, much more, much more um, kind of fitting packs for us. The first ones were relatively difficult. The ones here are easier to kill.
Good, so... Can we... Just rush through this here and force him down. Yep, we very much can do that. Well, sucks being you, pal. Fortunately, he has a lot of defense. But that's fine, both have a lot of defense. Good. Moving up. Getting ready and Perry. So, we killed everyone short of the two most powerful beings, the gatekeeper, which has only one more turn in our control. And there are some extra hit points because we can definitely um, start uh, getting hit points from them. By the way, this is bullshit. I had parry. Not sure why he shot through the parry. Anyways, so we're moving back. It's regain hit points. We lost four. Time for Void Conduit. Time to move over here. This should collapse all of that. Less high ground means it's not as likely to uh, to to take any high ground. He'll take a shot on us. Fortunately missing. I was hoping he would injure the um, gatekeeper a little bit more. So overwatch reload or reload overwatch rather. And let's wait for the enemy. We're going to lose our mind control, so we've got to deal with uh, uh, with the gatekeeper. Good. Problem is the bleeding. I hope that that will stop at some point. Otherwise we're going to take a lot of damage. Alright, regaining focus.
Let's continue harassing him. Yeah, a lot of it was just his shield. So unfortunately, the the regeneration makes it so much more annoying. Moving back into full cover. Good, so next up, let's continue draining hit points. Uh, this might hit us if he's going to go for a uh, gateway. Nope, he decides to take a second move instead. Not so much concerned about the commander's health, that's almost irrelevant at that point. As long as we do not get him killed, we're gonna be fine. We renew our mind control. Making this guy an excellent target. And let's move over here. I can see that we can get four more hit points out of him. Void Conduit. So we're back to 94. And he should die. To play our cards right, we might end up being able to get even more. Very nice. Good. Open the shell. Yes. Put a gateway in. Nice. Keeping him nicely in check. That's exactly what we want to do. Reloading and another null lens. Eh, I don't like his position over there. So, going to refill our focus. Plus, get a lot of random loot for whatever reason. And we brought him down to below 30 hit points for the first time, which is good. I don't want to be in his range, so we're simply going to move all the way back here. We can't block his shot. Doesn't matter if he hits the commander. Or the gatekeeper. Stasis counters our mind control, unfortunately.
Wow, that was a very long gravel. Moving up. Question is, are we going to dimensional rift him for seven to nine points of damage? It's probably the better idea. I hate the planeswalker ability. It is just annoying. It's not even like difficult. It is just plain out annoying. Amplify. Almost got him down. <laughs> he teleports back into it. Okay, great. Um, moving further back. I let the commander deal with him. Double movement. Gatekeeper moves into the uh, zone as well. Good old amplified shot. Let's hope he p positions himself somewhere where we can find him. Oh, we can very much find him there. Good. That finally takes care of uh, the second chosen. Moving out of line of sight and let's wait for the priest to get a bit closer. We can still get, if we play our cards right, we can get a few hit points out of him actually. We had line of sight, but then we lost it. That's too bad. I don't want to hurt him because his hit points are essentially our potential hit points. Which means the more hit points remain, the better for us. There we go. Void Conduit. This here is going to suck seven hit points out of him. Uh, six hit points out of him. So we're looking at a hundred. And if we play our cards right, we can get another four out of them. Well, the level already ended. 
So I guess we're going in with 98 hit points. And I think that's a pretty decent moment to stop the second episode. I'll make it a three-parter just because the awesomeness of uh, of running the last mission with only one soldier deserves kind of a tri trilogy. We're going to go into that last room and this is really um, what I've been training for the entire time. Mind you, we have an absolute shortage of damage that we can dish out. So the tactic here will be to focus kind of tunnel vision almost onto the um, onto the the avatars and try to kill them. We most certainly can't kill the entirety of this room. It, it's just not going to work. We need to kill three avatars, which is a lot. Um, and since they do have armor, I'm not a hundred percent sure how we're going to manage it. But it will it will take a few rounds to actually get them down. So I hope we can mind control something um, that'll help us killing it. And we will take a severe beating. Plus, we will need to put the commander somewhere where he's not going to be harassed, whilst essentially Hogbite is going to rush through the room from left to right and uh, right to left. And um, yeah, tries to kill everyone. We're going to see each other in the next mission, which is going to be the last uh, part. It's either do or die now. If I can't do it, then I'll conclude the run with someone who's more dedicated than I am, would uh, spend way, way more time to get uh, a tune even over 100 hit points, maybe to 500 hit points. So it is theoretically doable, but after spending probably two, two and a half months just exclusively on this run, I feel I've done my fair share to uh, to show how far you can take it. And yeah, we might be successful, which would be awesome. It's kind of the last barrier in uh, in difficulty speed run uh, in difficulty runs. There is not much more than running the game with one soldier. Anyways, thank you for your attention. Uh, as always, you know the YouTube drill. Leave a comment down below and give it a like. Thank you. Bye-bye and see you in the next run.